In this presentation, we look at understanding customers and customer profitability. There are several factors that help us understand our customers. Customer identity. Identifying the customer is easier in business to business markets than in retail markets, but understanding who the customers are in terms of the status in the marketplace, the products they make or sell, and size and potential for growth can be useful in establishing their potential for the organisation. The use of loyalty cards helps understand consumer buyer behaviours in retail markets. Customer history. Customer history is important in terms of volume of purchases, ordering patterns such as placing a regular standard order or ad hoc specialist orders, and how long have they been a customer. These factors can help to identify loyal customers. The relationship of the customer to the product and to the potential market. It is important to understand the relationship of the customer to the product. For example, what does the customer do with the product? Is it a component part of their final product? And if so, how important is it? And how many other organisations can supply it? If a customer is a key player in their market, other organisations may opt to follow their lead and purchase your product or service as well. Thus the customer becomes a strategic customer and is significant for attracting other potential customers to your business. Customer attitudes and behaviour. Some customers can be very demanding, whilst others are less so. Demanding customers can be useful in driving improvements in both the product and service levels, but can also make these unprofitable, particularly if the cost to serve becomes prohibitive. The strategic importance of the customer to the organisation in terms of the relationship to the potential market will also impact on the organisation's willingness to satisfy its demanding customers. The financial performance of the customer. Customers that are growing and very successful are likely to continue to be in business and therefore generate future business. The payment record is also relevant here as this will impact on the working capital cycle and the cost of financing different customers. Customer profitability. The profit earned from each customer is not necessarily the same as different customers can make different demands on the company resources which means that the cost to serve each customer or customer group could be different. Therefore understanding who the profitable customers are is important if we are to maximise the profitability of the organisation as a whole. Let's look at some benefits of customer profitability analysis. CPA enables a company to identify the most profitable customers or customer groups and therefore to focus their resources more effectively. By identifying the profitable customers or customer groups, CPA aids the development of marketing strategies to target the acquisition of profitable customers and perhaps to adopt strategies to discourage the unprofitable ones. This could be as simple as setting a minimum order quantity or charging for delivery on orders below a certain value. This passes on some of the costs to the customers. Decisions as to the level of service provided or functionality required by customers. It may be that demanding customers are unprofitable due to changes required in the standard product. Understanding the relative profitability of the customer base can aid the decision as to whether to charge a higher premium for changes or additional levels of service. Understanding the impact of losing key accounts can aid negotiations as the organisation has a better understanding of the limits within which it can negotiate a profitable relationship with the customer, or even knowing when to walk away. Understanding CPA helps quantify the financial impact of proposed changes to the customer mix. As marketing strategies are developed to target specific types of customer or customer groups, Understanding the relative profitability enables the investment appraisal of future marketing spend. CPA can highlight the cost of obtaining new customers and the benefit of retaining existing customers as retention rates and acquisition costs can be taken into account to establish the benefit from various marketing strategies. This knowledge is built up over a period of time by close monitoring of the marketing strategy and its impact. And CPA highlights whether strategies such as product development or market development are appropriate, 
For example, developing new products to profitable customers or seeking more profitable market channels or segments. Let's look at the costs to serve. The costs to serve are those costs that relate directly to customers. In CPA, we only want to allocate costs directly to customers and we want to avoid apportioning costs such as general administration. The acid test is asking if we stop selling to the customer, will we save the cost? The cost to serve includes things such as the customer specific discounts or the cost of sales visits and the financing cost of outstanding receivables that is when customers don't pay on time. Let's take a look at a typical customer profitability report. It is important to look at the product mix as some products may carry a higher margin and therefore taking into account the direct product costs is an important part of customer profitability analysis. Wherever possible we want to encourage customers to buy the high margin items. So we start with the revenue from the actual product mix then deduct any adjustments made to the normal selling price such as discounts. Then deduct the direct product costs. This gives us the contribution for selling the products. This report is then continued onto the next slide. Once we have the product contribution, we can deduct the costs to serve to derive the contribution per customer or in effect the customer profitability. This can include costs such as sales visits, the cost of dealing with returns, as if it is a product, we have to check that it is still in a saleable condition and then put it back into the inventory. The distribution costs, specific promotions, cost of holding specific inventory and costs of financing the payment collection are also included. The key for costs to serve is to make sure that they relate directly to the customer. It is not good to apportion costs, otherwise you are detracting from the analysis. Remember, if you stop selling to the customer, will you save the cost? If the answer is yes, then we can allocate it to that customer. This then provides the customer contribution or relative profitability. There are in fact different forms of customer profitability. The term customer profitability tends to indicate that we can calculate the profit for every customer. However, this is not always possible, but it might be possible to group customers together and calculate what we call the customer segment profitability. A simple example might be a retailer who can separate out the online customers from those that shop in store. In this example, it is possible to imagine that there are different costs associated with both types of customer. A company selling personal computers may also be able to separate out individual personal customers from corporate customers, or a bank can separate out demographic differences, for example students and senior citizens. One aspect of customer profitability that is popular in the marketing literature is the lifetime customer profitability. As the term suggests, this attempts to forecast the profitability of a customer over their lifetime. And finally, there is the view that customers are assets, and therefore we can undertake the same investment appraisal analysis as we would with any other asset, and look for a return on our customers. The term customer lifetime value, or CLV, tends to incorporate elements of both lifetime customer profitability and the customer as an asset. The CLV attempts to calculate the net present value of the future profits earned and compare this to the acquisition costs. In the formula shown here, MT is the margin or contribution from products that we saw on the earlier slide. CT is then the costs to serve and I is the cost of capital and over a period of time we would be able to estimate the potential retention rate of customers. Imagine that you are in charge of a bank. If you can capture students as customers and keep them for life they could be worth a lot of money as they might potentially need a loan, then perhaps a mortgage, potentially insurance products, investments and pension plans 
and lots of other products that banks provide. You could estimate the potential profit over their lifetime and estimate a figure that you could afford to spend in acquiring them in the first place. This can be useful in deciding marketing strategies as well as determining the optimum mix of customers to target. In reality, it is highly likely that a company will have a mix of customers, or indeed a portfolio of customers. There are numerous versions of illustrating a portfolio of customers, but one of the most effective is shown here. Each customer or customer group is given a rating, which is determined by considering several factors. There is a degree of subjectivity here, but it ensures that customers are considered on a range of factors, both financial and non-financial, and which includes an estimate of their future potential to generate profits. The factors for the customer rating would include items such as loyalty, with a reference to past purchases and the number of other suppliers with which the customer does business. The core market in which they operate. Is it a core market serviced by our organisation and one we plan to service for some time to come? The finance aspects a reference to their payment record and financial strength of the customer. The value added. Is there potential for our organisation to add significant value to the customer? The growth potential of the customer. If the customer can grow and generate future sales, they'll obviously be a very good customer. The degree of support required. In other words, how demanding are they likely to be as a customer? Are they going to be high maintenance and cost a lot to service? These factors are scored on a scale of 1 to 5 and weighted to arrive at an overall score. This is then plotted against the customer profitability. The result can be used to develop a strategy, for example, of how to move customer B to the position of customer A. It recognises that even those less profitable customers are still useful if we can improve their profitability in some way. This video is part of a series of short videos that explain specific aspects of the strategic management framework and cover some of the strategy models that can be used in the analysis, formulation, implementation and review and control of strategy and the role of the management accountant. This presentation is provided as part of the support materials for the book Management Accounting in Support of Strategy by me, Graham S. Pitcher, and published by Business Expert Press.